Hi coaches and welcome to the Beachbody Performance Webinar. I'm here sitting with Dr. Nima Alamdari and I want to just share with you what we're going to go through today. Um, let me advance this. We've got an introduction to our brand new Beachbody Performance line and uh, Dr. Nima is going to take you through the science behind each of the products, um, their in ingredients, uh, the clinical studies on the ingredients how the Beachbody performance line is better than the competition, and we're going to go through some common questions that have come up through our test group that we think you will enjoy hearing the answers to. Later on, we're going to go through the marketing elements with Carolina Gutnitsky, our Vice President for the Beachbody performance line, Shakeology, and all supplements. She'll take you through the current pricing, the kit configurations, how to earn success club points with Beachbody Performance, and all the coach tools and the training we've developed. So let's get started. I'd like to properly introduce Dr. Nima. So okay, he's got a lot of credentials here I want to go through. Dr. Nima Alamdari, he's uh, here now with us as the Scientific Affairs Board Director. Um, he has also been on faculty at Harvard University. And he's also done his postdoctoral training at Harvard Medical School. And he's got a PhD at the University of Nottingham. So welcome, Dr. Nima. Thanks, Sandy. And uh, so tell me, why do we need performance nutrition? Thanks, Sandy. Yeah, really good question. It's, um, it's really important for us to understand how our bodies respond to exercise. So when we're exercising, our bodies go through big changes. And we want to understand uh, these so we can optimize our systems and improve performance. So this field is known as exercise physiology, and it assesses how our body responds to exercise on the day of exercise or over successive days. So knowing how our bodies respond to exercise, we absolutely know that nutrition can play a huge role in influencing our systems to better perform, recover, and adapt to training or exercise. So this field is also known as sports nutrition or performance nutrition. So how can we do that? What, what can we influence? Yeah, we can take a really smart approach to improving the body's performance and response to exercise. And there's four key areas that we wanted to look at. The first is energy. So based on established science, we know that we can influence the energy pathways in the brain and muscles. We do this by optimizing our metabolism and by making the way our fuels like carbs and fats get used more efficiently. So the second is also hydration. We know that during exercise, just a small drop in body water can result in a huge drop in our power and performance. So if we can influence the way our body's hydration status and fluid balance works, we can improve our performance. We'll touch on osmolality a little bit later in the presentation, but it's something that's really important too. So muscle, um, one of the biggest inhibitors to performance is lactic acid buildup in our muscles, which causes that feeling of muscle burn or fatigue that can limit our performance. We know that through nutrition we can target this issue. And another really important part is muscle recovery is critical for performance and getting better results faster. So performance nutrition can increase the way our muscles grow while reducing breakdown. And all of this works in harmony to improve the way our muscles function which means better power and better strength. So lastly, we know that delayed onset muscle soreness, or known as DOMS, is a real problem for recovery, and it can limit the way your uh, performance um, or on the day, it can limit your performance on the day or even hold you back for, from exercising at all. We know that exercise itself causes inflammation in the muscles that leads to the feeling of soreness. And for many people, including athletes, taking these non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs like ibuprofen um, to relieve pain or soreness are very prevalent. But overuse of NSAIDs is known to have severe side effects like GI distress or stomach ulcers or cardiovascular complications. So now there's a groundswell in research to see how nutrition can play a role in, in, uh, in reducing exercise-induced muscle inflammation and soreness without those nasty side effects. Dr. Nima, I heard some things on the news about supplements. What's with the bad rap? Yeah, it's, um, there's been a lot of media attention on supplements, and I think rightly so. So supplements out there may generally not be what you expect them to be, and there's some really scary stats, such as 10 to 15% of supplements actually contain banned substances. 
This is crazy that people can inadvertently dope when they're trying to optimize their nutrition. A large percentage of supplement labels do not contain what the label says. If you have no idea what you're actually getting, it might not have the purity or potency to even have an effect and really questions the integrity of what's out there. But lastly, what I've been really fascinated about is that even if a supplement contains what it says it does, a huge percentage of these supplements just have no scientific evidence or evidence basis to their formulations or design. So I have a question for you. How does the Beachbody performance line stack up? Okay, yeah, here we go. So first of all, we're really focused on quality and integrity. So we have rigorous testing protocols to ensure that the ingredients that we're buying and putting into the product are what they say they are. We make sure we get the highest quality and level of purity possible of these key active ingredients to ensure the potency and efficacy. We're also working with NSF, and we have actually got NSF certification that all our Beachbody performance products are free of banned substances and safe for professional and collegiate athletes. And you'll be seeing the sticker of the NSF logo on our labels and all over our website. Secondly, um, science and evidence basis. All the key active ingredients that we put into the formula are backed by top-notch, rigorous scientific evidence. Equally important, many of the ingredients we chose not to include are the ones that have no scientific evidence or just do not do anything for performance. That's what really differentiates us from the other products out there, and we'll get into that a little bit more later. So also efficacy. We did not only include the ingredients that have been established by science to be effective, but we made sure we included them at levels that are established by the clinical studies to be effective. Less than the clinically effective dose obviously won't work, but too much of an active ingredient can actually be harmful or counterproductive. And I'll show you some examples of that a little bit later. Also nature, we're looking at the best ingredients from nature, such as plant-based phytonutrients that can act as powerful performance enhancers or potent recovery aids. And this coupled with no artificial colors, flavors, sweeteners or preservatives fits with our holistic uh, vision to the performance line. Lastly, customization. We wanted to take the guesswork out so that you don't have to go to GNC or, for, or be overwhelmed or confused by the product offerings. Beachbody Performance was designed to be customized to any exercise program or Beachbody exercise program. We didn't want to take a one-size-fits-all approach to our doses. A lot of the products out there are not very well designed for women or people at lower body weight. So with Beachbody Performance, you can customize your dose to your body weight, your goal, your duration of exercise, as well as your activity or exercise program. And um, we will see on our website there is a cool feature. It's a product recommender where you can actually enter your body weight, your goal, your exercise program, your duration of exercise. Um, it will recommend the right combination of products for you. Very cool. So let's go into the science behind uh, the lineup. Okay, uh, sure. You know, it's been established uh, science that certain ingredients, when positioned at the right times, can absolutely help us perform better, keep us hydrated, or allow us to recover and adapt better. So we've put forward a really smart nutritional strategy at the right time, so pre, during, and post-exercise, as well as nighttime, which is a really hot topic right now in the research community. Okay, let's start with the pre-workout formula, Energize. Yeah, I'm really excited about Energize. It's a great tool. We've got three key ingredients that work in distinct ways to help improve exercise performance. You might remember I talked a little bit about lactic acid buildup causing that muscle burn feeling and fatigue. Well, beta alanine is a key ingredient to combat that. Here's how it works. Beta alanine is a natural amino acid that we get in our diet, mainly from meat, but we don't get enough from our diet to reach the active dose. When you get the active dose, beta alanine works by increasing our muscle carnitin levels, which reduces the lactic acid buildup in our muscles and delays time to fatigue. So it's been shown to be really effective for high intensity exercise, such as high intensity interval training, or such as the types of training you might see in Insanity or Max 30, or some of our more advanced exercise programs. But two more things to note, um, beta alanine is not a one hit wonder. It does become more effective with repeated use over time. 
It takes about four weeks to build up in the system, so you really re reap the rewards from repeated usage. Secondly, some of you might be familiar with the tingling or itching feeling you might take, get when taking beta alanine or Energize, but that's the beta alanine getting in your system. It's perfectly normal, it's nothing to be worried about, and it generally goes away when you start exercising intensely. It also generally subsides over time with repeated usage. Okay, so uh, caffeine also has been known to be a very helpful performance enhancing ingredient and widely established to help with focus, reaction time, cognitive performance and exercise performance. But what hasn't been established until recently is that low doses or very low doses of caffeine are equally as effective as high doses, but without the nasty side effects like jitters, nervousness, anxiety or the inability to sleep. So the third component, quercetin, is a, is a plant-based phytonutrient found naturally in fruits and vegetables like apples and onions. In multiple studies, quercetin has been shown to improve exercise performance and reduce fatigue. It's still not ex known exactly how it works in the body, but it's thought that it might work as an energy booster in our cells or by uh, reducing exercise-induced inflammation. But before we move on, you might have noticed that there are also different options for serving sizes, and this is actually a key feature of our customization, which accounts for your body weight. So therefore, the dose that we'll, will be provided will uh, depend on your body weight. So can we go back a second to the beta alanine? I keep hearing about it. What is so great about it? Yeah, sure. There's a growing body of evidence that beta alanine, by some of the best in the world, that beta alanine is a performance enhancing ingredient. So you can see here the figure to the right is a list of studies across multiple different sports, such as swimming, rowing, sprinting, and cycling. And these studies show that beta alanine has a significant benefit to performance, particularly for bouts of high intensity exercise lasting one to four minutes. It's also been shown to work when doing high intensity intervals with a longer period of exercise, meaning it can really work when you're sprinting at the end of a long race or when you're doing high intensity intervals that are found in so many of our beach body fitness programs. So also you'll see that studies have shown that 800 milligrams is the ideal dose both for efficacy and for comfort meaning it's the lowest dose that still works effectively while minimizing the tingling or itching some people might feel. Other uh, competitive pre-workout formulas on the market start with 1,600 milligrams or even 3,000 milligrams per dose. This would be quite unsuitable or really uncomfortable for many women or people at lower body weights. And generally the formulas are not well designed with lower body weight people or women in mind. Also, its effects are known to be compounded by repeated usage, meaning the longer you take it, the better it will work for you. So you should really feel a major difference after four to 10 weeks of use. Let's go back to the um, low-dose caffeine. Um, what is new about that? Yeah, a few things, Sandy. Actually, the landscape in caffeine research has shifted, with researchers looking at what low doses or very low doses can do for performance. As I mentioned, um, we've long known that caffeine has been a great performance enhancing effect, but high caffeine doses are associated with side effects. Low doses have recently been shown to have similar performance benefits, but without those effects of higher doses. So if you look at the uh, chart on the right, the so column A is the control with no caffeine. Column B is the low dose of caffeine and shows improved time to exhaustion. However, if you look at the very far right-hand column, the AB, with the highest dose, it shows that it was not effective in improving performance versus the control with no caffeine. So just like I mentioned with beta alanine, too much of a good thing, in this case, caffeine levels, can actually be counterproductive. So that's basically why we use low-dose caffeine, plus we uh, get it from a natural green tea source versus the synthetic anhydrous forms that you might see a lot in the market. Okay, and lastly, what about the quercetin? Yeah, quercetin is um, the most re research phytonutrient in exercise or exercise performance. So you can see here the chart to the right shows that multiple studies have proven that quercetin improves exercise performance and VO2 max. And VO2 max is just a measure of your max maximum oxygen capacity during exercise. And quercetin has been shown to help improve that capacity. 
Dr. Nemo, we had some questions come up from our test group that I think this audience would like to hear the answers to. So can we? Uh, can I take you through all these? Um, why do I feel tingling or itching in the, my hands and face from the Energize product? Yeah, as I mentioned, um, it's actually coming from beta alanine. So beta alanine is an amino acid that's found naturally in our food and diet. For some people, it's known that it'll induce a sense of tingling or itching, which means it's getting into your bloodstream. Nothing to worry about. It just means that it's in your bloodstream. It's totally normal. And for most people, the feeling subsides with exercise and with repeated use over time. It's worth just repeating that the dose we use is 800 milligrams, and this is the dose that multiple studies show is the minimum level needed to be effective, but also provides the most comfort in terms of less tingling than higher doses. It's also based on body weight, and, um, and uh, so the, if you weigh less, you may feel it more. So the point is that you can tailor based on your weight, which makes this much more customizable, particularly for women. Other pre-workouts on the market generally have much higher doses of beta alanine, which can be really uncomfortable or put people off. Okay, why is the color of Energize such a bright yellow? Is that natural? Yeah, the, um, the vibrant yellow color of Energize actually is natural from questin. Questin is naturally found in fruits and vegetables, such as skins of apples and onions and grapes. The bright color is attributed really to the purity and the potency of the question we use, meaning the brighter the color, the purer the question is. So if you see another product out there with question as an ingredient and it's not that bright yellow color, then the quality could be inferior or the dose too low to actually have an effect. Interesting. Um, now, I'm sure people want to know, are there plans to discontinue our E&E product? Um, no plans yet, no, none as far as I know. So how is this different than E&E? &E? People have noticed that E&E &E has arginine, but Energize does not. In fact, there are many ingredients found in competitor pre-workout formulas that are not included in Energize. Why is that? Yeah, really good question, Sandy. I'll, I'll address those in the following slides. Okay, so um, arginine is featured in both E&E &E and other pre-workouts on the market. And keep in mind that E&E &E was formulated back in around 2010 and 2011. Research has progressed since then, and scientific consensus since 2013 is now that arginine just does not play an important role in improving performance. So looking at the top, gra top graph there, um, where placebos were tested against arginine, you'll see the flat lines show there's no difference between the placebos and arginine on VO2 max. The graph at the bottom shows no difference be between placebo and L-arginine in performance as measured by time to exhaustion. So this has been confirmed even in the last month where um, another important paper coming from world leaders in the field of nitric oxide and exercise performance shows that arginine does not have an impact on exercise performance. Lastly, and I think interestingly, arginine is known to be a vasodilator, meaning it, is, uh, it expands your blood vessels and increases blood flow whereas caffeine is a slight vasoconstrictor, meaning it restricts blood flow. So these formulas that have both caffeine and arginine in them aren't particularly well thought out because the mechanisms actually lack synergy, but also can actually oppose each other. Oh, cool. Okay, another question. Why are there no antioxidant vitamins C and E? Yeah, this is a really hot topic at the moment with most uh, performance supplements actually fortifying with high levels of vitamin C and E. But these studies show that these high levels of uh, vitamin antioxidants can actually hamper adaptations to exercise, particularly when taken near the exercise window. Now, what about uh, vitamin B? I thought that was for energy. Yeah, we don't fortify with vitamin B either. And it's similarly been shown that vitamin B does not improve exercise performance. There might be a role for people with B vitamin deficiencies, but that's just not a problem for people if they have a balanced, balanced and healthy diet. Okay, and what about creatine? Why no creatine in Energize? Yeah, there's a few reasons. Um, first of all, the best way to take creatine is with carbohydrate or protein to create the insulin response needed to get creatine into the muscle. And the best time to take creatine has been shown to be post-workout, not pre-workout. That's why we don't have creatine in Energize. 
still part of the uh, Beachbody performance lineup, but we recommend that you take it with a high protein recover shake after a workout where we know that it will be more effective. So if you see other competitive pre-workouts with creatine, you know, there's generally a few things that you might want to look at. First, is there any carbohydrate or protein in the formula? If not, the creatine will just not be as effective. Second, how much of the creatine is in there? There needs to be at least three to five grams to be effective, and anything less will likely just not work. Third, what is the form of creatine in there that they're using? If it's not creatine monohydrate, then it's just not the best. You'll see that many competitive pre-workout formulas contain other forms of creatine, like creatine nitrate, magnesium chelate, claiming better improved absorption, better bioavailability, and better performance than creatine monohydrate. But repeated studies have shown that this is just not true. So just don't buy. My advice would be don't buy into the marketing hype about the other forms of creatine. Creatine monohydrate has the most proven track record by far in multiple different sports and exercises to improve performance and also has the best safety track record too. All right. Well, is it okay if we move on, Dr. Nima? Please do. <laughs> Tell me why we need a during workout drink. Why not just water? Yeah, that's a really good question, Sandy. And it's been well established fact that just a one to two percent drop in our body weight through sweating can result in over a 10% reduction in power during exercise or sports. So it's really important to stay well hydrated to maintain or improve our performance. But we know that water alone is not as effective and I'll explain. So we formulated hydrate to be more effective than water and other sports drinks out there with three, well, with three key features. So the first is that for effective hydration, you need a specific fluid osmolality which is driven by a specific level of carbohydrates plus electrolytes in a specific volume of water. This osmolality ensures rapid fluid absorption to help maintain fluid balance, improve hydration, and therefore improve performance. And I'll explain osmolality again in the next slide. So through sweat, we lose a significant level of electrolytes, particularly sodium, potassium, calcium, and magnesium, and we need to replace them to maintain hydration. You don't get these electrolytes with water, so it's important to have them in the right forms and the right levels. We formulated hydrate to target the typical amount of electrolytes that are lost in sweat and are based on sweat losses um, on, in published studies. So we chose the citrate forms also of these minerals because they're more comfortable for the stomach. Lastly, we've got the added benefit of improving performance with Questin. This is the same ingredient that I talked about with Energize, and it helps to improve endurance and reduce fatigue so you can last longer during your workouts. We use the industry's best and purest Questin, and that's again what causes the bright yellow color of hydrate, just like I explained with Energize. Okay, so are you gonna explain what the heck is osmolality? Sandy, yes, I will. It's, um, it's hard to pronounce, but it's a simple concept based on osmosis. So osmolality is the amount of solutes in a drink, um, in, in a fluid like a drink or your blood. During exercise, the ideal drink should be lower than, sorry, during exercise, the ideal drink should be a lower osmolality than the blood, and I'll explain why. So when you consume a low osmolality drink, it goes from a low osmolality or concentration to a higher osmolality in our blood for rapid fluid absorption and maintenance of fluid balance. So if the osmolality or concentration is too high, like with high sugar sports drinks, it will absorb very slowly and can cause stomach discomfort or can actually dehydrate. If the osmolality or concentration is too low, like water, it's fast absorbing, but can actually dilute the blood and the body can't retain the fluid. So you actually will need to go to the bathroom or pee it out. All right, we got some questions from our test group on the hydrate product. So why is sugar in hydrate? Isn't sugar bad for you? Yeah, well, um, while eating lots of sugar, I think, is bad for you if you're sedentary or sitting in your office all day, um, that's true. But if you're exercising for long periods of time or at high intensity, the body absolutely requires a certain level of sugar in order to ensure rapid fluid absorption and maintain proper hydration. 
And why take hydrate during short 30-minute workouts? I think here's a general rule of thumb. If you're working out hard enough to be sweating profusely, hydrate can be a really helpful tool to help improve performance. It's also beneficial when you're working out for longer period of, periods of time, such as endurance type training or competition. We've got written instructions on the label to indicate how much to use for certain periods of time as a, as a kind of helpful guidance. So why is hydrate such a bright yellow? Yeah, light energized hydrate contains quercetin, that natural plant-based phytonutrient that's found in fruits and vegetables and has that naturally uh, vibrant yellow color. So the color is, I think, just testament to its purity and potency. Okay, Dr. Nemo, we're moving on to the post-workout drink. Now, I thought we already had a recovery drink. Why did you make this one? Um, well, this one is superior, I think, for a number of reasons. We know more about recovery now than we did a few years ago, and we've incorporated these latest insights to this formula. We can start with the protein. Too little protein is just not optimal for muscle recovery, and too much protein is a waste where we can't metabolize it in the body. So it's been established that we need 20 grams or around 20 grams of high-quality protein to improve muscle protein synthesis and reduce breakdown. This means faster and more sustained muscle recovery and improved adaptation to exercise. What makes our protein blend different than most simple protein powders out there is that it's a combination of high quality fast, medium and slow release proteins. We also have glutamine and branch chain amino acids which include leucine, isoleucine and isovaline at the level and ratio known to improve muscle synthesis and repair. But not only do we have the optimal level of high quality proteins, we combined it with a powerful phytonutrient rich extract from pomegranate. Specifically, it's rich in elegotannins. And elegotannins have got a lot of attention lately in the research community as a potent recovery tool. Studies show that this pomegranate extract reduces muscle soreness from intense exercise and also improves strength recovery. It's important to note that not all pomegranate extracts are created equal. So here we're using the exact same form, the high quality proven form of pomegranate extract that was used in these clinical trials. So this may be especially useful for a beginner who is just starting out on an exercise program and soreness might be an obstacle to continue working out. But it could also be really beneficial to athletes or anyone doing more advanced workout programs who wants to um, who want to uh, recover faster so that they can just hit their next workout that much harder. Okay, tell us about the elegotannins. Sure, you know, this research was conducted by world-leading exercise physiologists um, that studied the effects of pomegranate extract on soreness and strength recovery. So the graph on the right shows that they saw much better recovery 48 to 72 hours after exercise with the pomegranate extract versus the placebo. You'll see on the graph the difference between the two lines, and that was also associated with reduced muscle soreness, again, using the same form and dose that we're using in the Recover formula. Dr. Nima, we had questions that came in on the Recover products, so I'll go through these with you. Should I continue to take additional BCAAs? So I think the answer is that it's not necessary. Uh, there's no harm in taking additional BCAAs or branch chain amino acids, but it's, um, we, you know, we have them at sufficient levels and they're, uh, they're actually delivered in Recover. Can I mix Recover with Shakeology? You could, but it wasn't designed to work together. I think we recommend you to take Recover immediately after exercise, then about half an hour to an hour later or when you get hungry to have your Shakeology. Can I mix Recover with Recharge? Again, you could, but it's not designed to be taken together. Um, for most of us, our bodies can really only handle about 20 grams of high-quality protein at any given time, uh, particularly post-exercise, uh, to increase muscle protein synthesis. So any more could be wasted or just not utilized or metabolized. So recover is ideal for post-workout recovery, recharge for overnight recovery, and probably best to keep them separated. And will there be a vegan version of Recover and Recharge? <clears throat> so right now, um, we put forward the most effective post-exercise drinks in Recover and Recharge. But I think if 
we can get these to be very successful, we can certainly look at expanding the line with the most compelling, with you know, more compelling product offerings. And will our R and R be discontinued? No plans yet. How is Recover different than R and R? Yeah, um, you know, since R and R was developed, we just know a lot more about post-exercise nutritional requirements. For example, we know that you don't need a certain level of carbohydrates or specific ratio of carbs to protein to stimulate insulin-mediated transport of protein to the muscle to stimulate recovery. So, Recover incorporates our latest understanding, and as the science evol evolves going forward, so will beach body performance. Hmm. Okay. How about, um, can you talk to some of the key differences between Recover and r, &R or even other recovery products? Yeah, I think, you know, there are a number of differences that you might see out there, all compared to r, &R and we can go through them. So, first, Recover has higher protein levels, 20 grams of high-quality time-release protein versus only 10 in r, &R. So, as I mentioned, we know that 20 grams is optimal to stimulate muscle protein synthesis and recovery less being suboptimal and more not being metabolized or used effectively for most of us. Recover has a high level of branched chain amino acids than r, &R to stimulate growth and repair. It has a high level of L-glutamine. Now it has a lower level of carbohydrate, so 10 grams in Recover to help with glycogen replacement versus 40 in r, &R which may not be suitable for most people, especially those people who are trying to lose weight or that might be uh, carbohydrate conscious. The calories are lower in Recover, so nearly half. So that's also very good for those who are calorie conscious. An added feature is our pomegranate extract, which, has an, um, which is shown to have a number of benefits as we've discussed. So those including reduced muscle soreness, improved strength recovery, uh, particularly after intense exercise. You know, unlike um, other brands or r, &R we don't have any of these antioxidant vitamins in there like vitamin C and E. Uh, because they've been shown to hamper adaptations to exercise. Lastly, we have no artificial colors, flavors, sweeteners, or preservatives that are so common in other products. Okay, Dr. Nemo, we're going to go now to recharge. We're almost there. Uh, so what is with recovery overnight? I haven't heard of such a thing. Can it really be effective? Okay, we've covered a lot of hot topics, but this is another one. So <laughs> um, really hot topic at the moment. <laughs> Um, the research is just coming out with various publications just coming out over the past month or two as well. So we know now that the right nutrition before sleep can improve overnight recovery above and beyond just nutrition in the day. Better recovery overnight, reduced soreness and improved strength outcome is really attractive, not just to athletes, but I think to anyone taking their fitness seriously and trying to get even better results faster. So we can start with the protein. High quality, slow release protein taken before sleep has been shown in recent clinical studies to improve muscle protein synthesis overnight and therefore reduce breakdown. So this means a sustained period of re repair and recovery while you sleep and improved adaptations to exercise over time. In fact, research just published this month shows that slow release casein protein taken before sleep can also increase muscle mass and strength. This is a great strategy for anyone looking to just get an edge over their typical performance nutrition strategy. We've also got branched chain amino acids in there, including leucine, isoleucine, and valine at the level and ratio known to improve muscle synthesis and repair. But not only do we have the optimal level of high quality slow release proteins, we combined it with a unique phytonutrient rich extract from tart cherry this time. So specifically, it's rich in anthocyanins, and anthocyanins have got a lot of attention recently in the research community to aid recovery and help combat delayed onset muscle soreness, otherwise known as DOMS. So studies show that this tart cherry improves recovery and reduces muscle soreness from intense exercise both in resistance and endurance trained athletes. Like our pomegranate extract, it's worth noting that not all tart cherry powders are created equal. We're using the same high quality proven form of tart cherry that was used in these clinical studies. It's really important because if it doesn't have the phytonutrient content in there, then there's no guarantee that it will actually work at all. So again, tart cherry research has exploded with researchers and athletes using it as a recovery tool to target exercise-induced inflammation 
and DOMS. This is especially useful for people who might be at the early stages of a new workout program who might suffer more than others from muscle soreness. We know that athletes at all levels are using non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen in an effort to reduce muscle soreness from training um, so they can just get back to training or competition that much faster. So recharge with a phytonutrient uh, rich tart cherry extract can be maybe a more natural way to reduce soreness and speed their recovery time and their ability to just get back to peak performance. Okay, let's look at some casein and tart cherry research. Okay, yeah, the underpinning science on this topic has been conducted by world leading scientists. So, on the left hand side, as I mentioned, new research shows that slow release protein shows improved overnight muscle recovery and can help increase muscle growth and strength. This is really important discovery, I think, that has attracted a lot of attention, not just from researchers, but also from users such as athletes. The study on the left-hand side literally just came out a few weeks ago. So tart cherry has also attracted a lot of attention from researchers and athletes alike, such as marathon runners, in an effort to reduce exercise-induced inflammation and to help stop delayed onset muscle soreness. You can see here there's two studies that were presented at the International Society of Sports Nutrition um, just at the end of last year by leading exercise physiologists showing that tart cherry improved muscle soreness in endurance and resistance trained athletes. So we used exactly the same form and dose of tart cherry used in those studies. So this has um, even attracted media attention. You'll see on the right-hand side um, an article in the Wall Street Journal from 2015 uh, that's talking about tart cherry and its potential use in marathon runners for bettering recovery. All right, we've got some questions that came in on, the, um, F, uh, on Recharge. Recharge seems to help me sleep better. What's in it that could cause that? Is there a sleeping aid in Recharge? Yeah, I do feel better when I have it, but um, there's no ingredients in there that actually act as sleeping aids. The, the clinicals on the tart cherry extract we're using in Recharge have centered around the anthocyanin effect on muscle soreness and recovery, but not imp improving sleep. Um, however, tart cherry is not just high in anthocyanins, it's also naturally high in melatonin. And there are studies on tart cherry juice demonstrating improved sleep quality because of that melatonin contribution. All right, we are now at creatine. So talk me through the creatine. Isn't it just for guys who want to bulk up? Um, it's not actually. Um, creatine is one of the most proven performance enhancing ingredients, particularly for high intensity exercises. And that's not just for men, it's for women too. Um, it's been shown uh, to have a really good benefit to senior or aging populations too, just for bettering their muscle function. You know, creatine is best taken with protein or carbohydrate uh, to allow transport to the muscle where it works best. Um, it's also established that it's most effective when taken after exercise. So that's why we've placed creatine as an add-on to recover post-workout to enhance its effect. I might have mentioned that you might see other creatine forms out there, such as creatine nitrate or creatine malate, promising better bioavailability or improving performance above and beyond that what creatine monohydrate does. But whenever these forms have been tested, they just have not shown these benefits. The creatine uptake to the muscle is an insulin-mediated response, and that's why it's, been, it's best taken with a high protein like Recover or with carbohydrates. Creatine works by increasing our own muscle creatine levels, which has been shown time and time again to improve high intensity performance and increase muscle strength and power. Lastly, it does enhance the effects of resistance training. So for those looking to increase muscle mass, creatine monohydrate is a great tool to reach that goal. It could be really useful for those programs such as Body Beast or P90X or other resistance based programs. Okay, and let's go to some questions. Should women take creatine? What are the risks and benefits? Will creatine bulk me up? You kind of uh, mentioned that. Yeah. And I want to get lean, so talk to that question. Sure, yeah, you know, creatine is established to have beneficial effects both for men and women, like we discussed. Um, it works the same way for men and women and has performance benefits for both resistance training and high intensity training, such as sprints or intervals. So generally, I think if your goal is to improve high intensity performance, creatine will help whether you're male or female. If your goal is to improve muscle mass, power and strength, 
and you're training using resistance type exercise like Body Beast or P90X, then creatine will help again, whether you're male or female. However, if your primary goal is solely to lose weight and to get slimmer rather than performing better, then we don't really recommend adding creatine to the mix. You know, one thing to note is that in the short term, creatine can cause water retention in the first couple of weeks taking it. That water retention effect subsides over time. Uh, and also to note the, uh, the performance and power and strength enhancing benefits are also achieved with repeated usage of creatine. Um, should you take the full dose of two scoops, which is 10 grams, or only one scoop, five grams, and how often? Good question. Um, in terms of dosing, if you want to speed up the time it takes to see these benefits, then you can load up with creatine by taking one five gram scoop four times per day for five days, known as a loading phase. Then go into one scoop with uh, your recover to keep your muscle creatine level elevated. So the second option, which is slightly slower but just as effective, is to add one five gram scoop of creatine with recover. And we'll be um, highlighting the dosing instructions to be one scoop, um, and you'll see that in, in the literature. And are you ready for the last question of the webinar? Please, Sandy. Is this creatine the same as max creatine? Yeah, they're actually um, both creatine monohydrate, but the um, Beachbody Performance uses the best source of creatine monohydrate on the market.